All right, so I want to record just a quick video to finish out this example that we were doing in class today. So this is the, uh, the uh, problem that we were looking at to uh, compute both the vertical deflection at joint C and the horizontal deflection at joint B of the, uh, the truss shown. And uh, we had done our real analysis, so this was us computing the reactions, and then we did our joint analysis, and if you notice, we sort of did it in one um, fell swoop. We just, you know, drew that exploded uh, view of the truss and just basically looked at it and did our method of joints analysis and it ended up going very, very quickly. Uh, and then what we had done is we did our uh, virtual analysis for the, um, for the deflection at joint C. And so what we did is we placed that vertical load at joint C of one, remember it's a unit load. We placed it downward because we assumed that the deflection would be downward. Um, and so once we had done that, we now had a new model that we needed to analyze and we start to finish, did the same thing, analyzed it. Uh, and then our remaining calculations we did uh, in Excel um, and these were the results of those calculations. And so uh, just remember a couple of things. So first off, um, for these values here, make sure that um, you, know, you recognize that what we did in class was utilize tension positive. Um, you could use compression positive. Again, you just need to be consistent between um, one or the other. Um, and then uh, we had listed the length uh, in inches and then the E and the A value uh, accordingly. Now, just so you are aware, like for instance, this 0 0.0559, I just wanna make sure that you know where that comes from. So what I'm doing is I'm doing little f big f times l divided by e divided by a so again that's negative 0 0.75 uh whoop negative 60 kips 72 inches all over 29,000 ksi and then two square inches so if you plug and chug that, again, just little f, big F, L, divided by EA for that row, you're going to get 0 0.0559, and then the units are inches. <clears throat> and so you just do that for each row. And so for row AD, it's going to be 0, uh, and row BC, it's 0, and for row CD, it's 0, because we either have a big F or a little f that's 0 in those rows. Uh, the only other row that gives you an actual value is BD, and you can see that's 0.3448. Um, got a lot of yellow here, so I'll just sort of box that like that. Uh, and so when it's all said and done, you get a value of 0 0.401. And so what that means is that, um, that the deflection at joint C in the vertical direction is 0 0.401 inches downward. And so that's your answer for that first uh, component. And then for the um, the vertical deflection, or sorry, for the horizontal deflection at um, at joint B, um, what we've got to do is we have to do a, another uh, analysis. Um, again, we remove all the loads and we place a horizontal load at B. Now, what I've done here is I placed a load going to the right. Okay, and I'm doing that because I want to show you what happens when the assumption is incorrect because it's actually not deflecting to the right; it deflects to the left. Now, if you go to the original truss, here's the original truss, and you might think, well, you've got this 60 load, 60 kip load here at C going to the right, so probably jo uh, joint B deflects to the right, but it actually doesn't, it deflects to the left. And I'll show you that a couple of different ways here in a bit. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to compute our, um, our reactions. So first off, this vertical reaction here this is dy, and if I look at the model, there are no vertical forces going up and down, so that's zero. Uh, and so what I will do is some moments at D to determine the reaction at A. And so if I'm summing moments at D, I have one times eight. And so that has to be counteracted by the reaction at A going in the opposite direction. So that means that AX times also a moment arm of from D, eight feet. So AX times eight feet is eight feet. 
which means AX is one or one that way. So this is AX is one. And so if you look at the remaining reaction in the X direction, I have one to the left, one to the right, which makes this DX is zero. So there are actually no reactions at D, but this, this is actually a really, really simple uh, truss analysis because if you go to your uh, just overall exploded truss analysis, let me go ahead and put that reaction here. I mean, this is the truss, right? There are no other reactions because if you go back up here, the, the reactions at D are zero. So this truss analysis is actually really easy. We can do joint A and we recognize this is a zero force member, um, which makes this a zero force member. So again, remember AD, that's a zero force. Um, if we look at joint C, and I'm skipping around here in order, but joint C, there is nothing going on on joint C. So remember, if you have a joint with no loads applied and two unknown members and no other loads, those are zeros. So oh, so that makes this zero. Um, and then the only member actually that carries load is this bottom member because if this is one to the left, if I look at joint A, if this is one to the left, that makes that one to the right. So that makes this one to the right, right? Okay, our analysis of joint C tells us that this is a zero force member. Um, so the only thing left is this diagonal and it doesn't really matter which joint you look at. You can look at joint B or look at joint D. If we look at joint B, you know, there's going to be an X and Y component to this diagonal member. But if you look at sum of forces in the vertical direction, there are no vertical loads. So that's zero and that's zero. So this has got zero force members all over the place. Um, and the reason why it has zero force members all over the place is because if you look at the original truss, there's only one load and it's collinear. It's along this member AB. So there's no vertical loads anywhere. So there's going to be a lot of zero force members. So what's going on with this uh, truss analysis? Zero, 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 zero. And then this member is one intention. And that's your truss analysis. That's it. So when you start doing your virtual work analysis, what you'll find is here's the table that you set up. So if you notice, see how you've got zero, 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 zero. Most of these are going to be zero, but look what happened here. Look at member AB. So member AB is experiencing one intention, but if we go back up to our real analysis right here, it was 60 in compression. Ooh. So when we do our tabular computations, we get a negative value. Hmm. So what that means is that the deflection at joint B in the X direction is negative 0.074 or 0.074 inches to the left. So what happened was, if we go back to our virtual analysis, we assumed that the deflection was going to be going to the right. And then when we did the analysis, we ended up getting a negative answer. So that means it's going to the left. So that's all that means. Whenever you get a negative value, it just means your assumption is correct. Now I'm going to give you a little taste of things to come for later. Later on, we will explore how to use um, structural engineering software or, or structural analysis software, I should say, to analyze a truss. But this is a, um, a structural analysis software package called RESA. And here is the truss uh, in question. And so what I've done is I've modeled this truss using uh, the, the modeling techniques we'll discuss later on in the semester. But one of the things that this uh, software allows me to do uh, is I get to actually view what the deflected shape looks like. And so if I show this deflected shape, uh, and let's, we'll go ahead and un include the undeflected shadow and hit apply. You can see here's what the truss looks like before and after deflection. It's been magnified so that we can actually see it because it's only, you know, 0 .007, or 0 0.07 inches. So it's blown it up quite a bit. 
But if you look at joint B, this is joint B before and after, and you can actually see it moves to the left. So you can actually see that deflection in the x direction, and it's deflecting left the way that um, the way that our analysis uh, indicated. And if you actually pull the results, if you go to joint deflections, here are joint deflections, and you can see joint B. There's the deflection 0.074 uh, to the uh, to the left. It's saying negative because it's saying negative is. A, a, a negative along the x-axis that's to the left. So this is just a taste of come uh, of things we're going to discuss later on uh, in the course. I just wanted to show you this, but um, but yeah. So this is um, this is truss deflections. Um, what you'll find on your homework problem because you're going to be doing both a horizontal and vertical deflection is also on the horizontal one. I believe you get a lot of zero force members. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, that's all we have for this video, and we will see you in class on Wednesday.